we are back. It is another European game. Villarreal versus Arsenal. First leg. First leg. Let's bear that in mind. Um, oh, we're playing away to Villarreal this week. And it is very crucial. Away goals this season have been very, very important. We know this for sure. Um, as you saw previously, Chelsea versus Real Madrid. Chelsea's got that away goal. Let's see what happens next week. Obviously, City versus uh, PSG later on, but don't care about Champions League right now. None of us do. It's all about the Europa League. Um, Europa League semi finals, Arsenal versus Villarreal. <sighs> Man, Unai Emery comes back. Well, Arsenal faces Unai Emery's team um, after his uh, sacking last season. With his, yeah, let's just say that his sacking last season wasn't as uh, great. And <sighs> man. Arsenal sits at, what, 10th place. Villarreal sits in 7th in their disrespectful leagues. And the crazy thing is that both teams are coming off a loss. So, it's going to be very interesting to see how these teams actually respond to this. Well, how they respond to that loss that they had on the weekend. Um, man, I don't know. I actually don't know. Um, obviously, we've had a lot of injury issues and it is down to that simple fact of where do we go from here um again as i have said the first leg is very very important um away goals for the away team means everything everything it is one of the most important ties second legs are important but if you can go into that first leg with two to three goals um if you can go into that first leg with two to three goals, it would be absolutely fantastic. Um, it just means that you can go into the second leg and have a nice little run and sort of, you know, still try to dominate the game, but you can relax a bit more because they have to score what more. They, they have to, the opposing team has to score more goals than you anyway. But again, it will make us have a comfortable second leg. Um, it is Arsenal football team, so there's no such thing as a comfortable second leg, especially if we're up by two goals. Um... Yeah, this is this is gonna be very very tight and very anxious game for a lot of Arsenal fans. A lot of Arsenal fans. It's gonna be very very interesting to see how this plays out for us. Um, again, this is our track back to the Champions League. If we can get to that finals, we're one step closer. One step closer to the Champions League, back to the Europa League final, and potential chance of being in the Champions League. Um, it's there for us. Uh. Last time these two, well, let's talk about the history about these two teams first. Last time we met was in the Champions League, 2009 and 2006. We all know what happened then. Arsenal won the first leg, we drew the second leg, we went through to the Champions League final in 2006, our first ever Champions League final appearance. That, that, it, it says a lot. It was our first ever Champions League final appearance, and it was something that we were able to do and again it was spectacular it yes we did lose the champions league final to barcelona but we haven't been back there since and <laughs> we need to get back to that champions league we need to be able to play on the grander stage play against the best teams in the world we do that yes europa league is great but we don't want to be in europa league no more we don't want to play on thursday nights anymore we want to play on tuesday and wednesday nights um the record between Arsenal and Villarreal is two wins for Arsenal and two draws. We cannot let this record go away. We cannot let it diminish. We have to push forward for it. Um, again, our first Champions League final was because we beat Villarreal in the semi-finals. That says a lot. History is behind us. We have that. We need this to work for us in our biggest favour obviously the same players aren't there but it's that mentality it's the history of club versus club it is to that point where we just need to be able to dominate and we cannot let Unite Emery knock us out of the Europa League and get to that finals we just, it just we just can't let it happen it, it, it would just be very very bad for us and then that means no European competition next year it means less funding because let's be honest Stan Kroenke ain't put, giving money to the, to the club he's not giving us money to put to buy anyone we have to work out how we get money to buy players or are we going to sell players? Who knows? Um, 
it is going to be very very interesting on how this game plays out um this game shows where do we go where do we go do we um do we let them play the way they want to play or do we force them to play the way that we like to play this game um we need to be consistent this game this game this the, the next two quarters of the semi-final game it's all about consistency this week next week we have to be consistent in how we play these games um they're gonna be very crucial very crucial to our season let's be real we're not getting back into any Europa league and chances in the premier league we're not definitely not in the champions league talk anymore at all we haven't been in that talk for a very long time um but again this is the tournament for us we need to win this um this might be a knockout stage but we cannot let up we have to run we have to do everything the greatest that we got to do um so i had previously written down i had written down a lot of things um our team selection for one i don't know um but with arteta's announcement today that abamyang kieran tyranny and lacazette are considered or um, maybe considered for this game is a whole different ball game different 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 ball game um but that being said could this be a ploy in him saying yeah they're going to be ready for, they, they might be ready for this game they might be able to play this game is that a smoke screen just being able to get their oppositions afraid and had them prepare for someone else um it, it it's a tough one um it's definitely a tough one to see what this is if it's true or if he's just playing the game is he trying to play mind games already um before the season before it starts it, it is tough it's tough it is very tough um because i thought that Bamian wasn't training with the squad but he might be available for the game uh like that with his fire injury there was no reports that he was training again or anything so it's very tough to understand where he is coming from with this uh news i would say for us um it, it's tough it's tough and um, if it's not true then we only have in, we have really and truly we have Inkefia to play as our striker I'm not too sure. He didn't play so great against Everton on the week um, weekend. Um, it is a tough one to go forward with, as I'm unsure if we could do it. If we can manage that high expectations of winning this game, um, or even scoring goals. But who else do we have? We have Martinelli, we have Pepe, or we have Belongan. Belongan. Um, that would that would play the the, the striker position. It all depends on who Arteta decides to pick, and if those three players are actually available, will Abamian actually be available? Will Lacazette be available? Will Tyranny be available? Because then that changes a lot of things in the midfield. That changes a lot of ways that we can play this game, and it is hard for anyone to really decide. Um. As I'm going to show you, as I said, I have many different lineups for this game. Many different lineups, um, and there's a load more post its with a lot of different names on it. I have no idea who I will select. Um, it will be very interesting and very tough. So, yeah, I don't know who I'm going to pick. Um, so lineups for this game. It's pretty tough, especially with that news that Arteta has just given us all. I am unaware of where we're going to go with this. I don't know what sort of play and or formation that we will go with. I don't even know if we're going to start the right people. Um, It's hard. It is very hard. But one thing I will say is that whoever is selected will have to be on the A game. We'll have to bring the best foot forward and we will run things the right way um what we do need to do one thing i will say that we need to do we need to capitalize on the chances that we make all these chances that we 
have the chances that we can score goals and everything like that, we need to make sure that we can do it because that has come to bite us in our ass. That has come to bite us back big time. Very, very big. Um, very often that it comes and it screws us over um, in many, many different ways. Um, and just sitting there, it shows us the ways... It does show us that we can get into the positions, we can potentially get that goal, but we just never it just never goes in the back of the net. Either we kick it too wide or we miss kick the ball and it screws us up in the in the long run. Um Abamian's done it, Lacazette's done it as well. Um so I'm not putting the blame on anyone in position. Everyone has done it in different ways and different aspects and different outcomes um one thing i will say <sighs> martinelli has to start yeah i will say that martinelli does have to start because every game that he started in he has scored and that is a positive outcome um so my lineup for this game um ah oh, i have no clue who to actually go with um but i can tell you what my what what my back four obviously leno will be in goal excusing his big blunder that he did on the weekend um against everton still trying to figure out how that one happened but it happens it does happen um if if it's true that tyranny is back or he's able to play this game um but I'm not going to, no. I'm going with who I know is fit and who is healthy um, until I see the team sheet that they are back in training and they are able to do everything they're back at 100%. This is who I'm going with. So I'm going with Xhaka at left back, Pablo Mari and Holding at centre backs with Callum Chambers as our right back. Yes, Callum Chambers. Not Cedric, not Bellerin, Callum Chambers. Um, in Holding midfield, this might shock a lot of people. Because I don't know why a lot of people don't think that this would actually be able to work. Um, I'm having Odegaard and Partey playing in holding midfield. Obviously, having an extra creative player in the holding midfield section is a lot better than not having him there. Um, attacking mids, I'm going with Pepe, Smith Rowe, and Saka as our attacking mids, with Martinelli leading the front line. Um, again, I know we haven't seen Martinelli lead the front line a lot recently, but I feel like he deserves to play do that this game. Um, he has he has been fantastic when he starts. He scored goals. He gives us that extra energy. And you know what? With those four up front, I could see us scoring a, a couple goals, getting into better positions, running their defense ragged. Um, it it is it will be a very interesting game. But again. This is all down to Lacazette, Aubameyang, Kieran Tierney and everyone not being healthy and not being able to play at all. That's what I'm going with. Um, that's the outcome. Um, I don't. I know a lot of people might disagree. I did have another sheet where I had Belongan leading the front line with Martinelli on the wing. Um, I also had Pepe leading the front line with Martinelli on the wing. Martinelli just needs to start. That's 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 how I have put it down. Um, but I'm going with that for me. I'm going with that squad. Um, Jacques, Leno in goal. Xhaka, Mari, Holding and Chambers as a back four. Odegaard and Partey as our mid holding midfields. With Pepe, Smith Rowe and Saka and Martinelli leading that front line. Um, we need to get two goals. We need to get at least two. One goal will be amazing. Uh, two will be absolutely fantastic. Maybe three. Put the put the tie to put the tie to bed before it even comes to the Emirates. But hey, wishful thinking. Um, Arsenal have always found a way to let us down. I would say we have everyone builds up this expectation that we're going to win. We're going to be able to do all of this damage, and it, it turns out to be a very dead game until the second second leg, which everything is on the line, and we then believe that we can actually win the game. We don't need to be doing that. We need to be able to know that we can win this game from the first leg. Um, obviously, the game's never done. Second legs are always important. But having that free away goal difference 
just free away goals will be absolutely amazing. That would be fantastic to come back to the Emirates with three goals aggregate. Oh, I'll definitely fancy our chances to be in that, in that um, Europa League final. Um, and we can redo what happened when Unai Emery took us there and we came out there. Let's not talk about it yet. Let's wait. Let me wait. I don't want to talk about that, that anytime soon. I'm not thinking about that right now. But again, this is going to be a very t touchy game for us. It's going to be very hard. And again, we're one step closer to that Europa League final. Two games, two legs, one Thursday, the next next week Thursday. We can put the game to bed t tomorrow night. Absolutely fantastic for us. But it all depends on what's going on. Um, thank you all again. If you want to catch us on the watch along, you know where we're going to be. We're going to be on Twitch. We're going to be on YouTube live from 7.45 on Thursday. Um, it's going to be fun. If you want to come, stick around. If you want to jump into the watch along, let me know. If you want to jump in, let me know. Let's talk. We can try to figure something out. But again, it's going to be fun. Hope to see you all there. And this is Arsenal season. Make or break. Let's uh, let's let's see what happens. Let's uh, let's definitely see what happens. Whew.